my farm in southwest Minnesota, we've received over 12 inches of rainwater. And it's resulted in a lot of places that look like this where we're just inundated with water. For starters, I'm out in the soybean field right next to the farm. You can tell there's a bunch of standing water down at the north end of the field. Received a bunch of water that ran down across the road and started to drain into our drainage ditch here, basically submerging a bunch of our soybeans. Because of how fast the water came down, you can see it moved a lot of the soil around and silt on the top of the soil that's now covering up a lot of our soybeans, which these ones are basically gonna be covered up from this silt and it'll probably inhibit the growth of any more of these soybeans. So now we're starting to see a bunch of blank spots from some of the erosion because of how fast the water came down here. Moving along farther in this field, you can see where that drainage ditch has overcome where that tall grass is. It's supposed to just run through there. But because it overran it, it's all backfilling into the field. Now have a good 15, 20 acres of just standing water, moving water even more into it back out in this field. And I say that because that field right here is about 30 feet lower than this field right here on the other side of the road. And as you can tell, there is thousands upon thousands of gallons of water sitting on this side of the road that need to go under the road. Thankfully not over the road like the water was doing last night and that gets drained down into this soybean field. So those soybeans are gonna be underwater for quite some time. Before I take you guys to some more fields, the county just showed up and because all the corn stalks get brought up with the water level and that was gushing over the road last night, they have the snow scraper on one of the dozer trucks and they're actually pushing off the corn stalks right now off the road. That way somebody doesn't go down this road and start to slip and slide with the vehicle. So they're gonna start pushing off corn stalks on this road in front of the farm now. Here is another one of our soybean fields. As you can tell, I have a lot of water standing on this one. Even again, went over the road here. Should be fine for me to get through, but another field. Some of our other fields are farther north off in this direction. Yeah, this is actually a road right here. Might not believe it. Uh, here you do, but over here you don't. Because of all the water running across, it's honestly really just crazy how much water we have. Going over all the roads right now, it's gonna be a lot of work to get everything back up in order for this summer. We'll have to find a different way to go around, see if there's any other roads that are open to check out some more fields. Next road we're gonna go down here, I already know that the water is gushing over it since it's a really low area, but it's also crazy to think that there's no barricade in front of this road. There is on that one, you can see it right back there. Reason there's no barricade, the county posted on Facebook late last night, they ran out of barricades. There's that many roads, bridges that are washed over. So we'll head down this way, I'll show you guys how much water's rushing down here. Hopefully it's gone down since the last time I was here, but we'll see when we get there. It's actually worse than what it was yesterday. If you look, it's eroding away. I'm just at the very edge of where it's eroding away the road. And it goes for a good 200, 300 feet up into the bridge, which it's probably eroded away a good foot off the road. And we bring a lot of equipment down this road in the fall. I don't know how long it takes to rebuild the road, especially when many, many counties in Southern Minnesota, Northern Iowa and Eastern South Dakota are dealing with the same thing. So maybe this road won't even be accessible this fall, who knows. But we'll try to find another way around, Let's go see if we can see any other fields of our own. It's not just spots where the water's running over the road that we have problems. Also, spots like this where the road has made huge gullies along the side of the road where the water is rushing last night. And I am sure that we have big gullies and washout spots like that in the fields. The reality is a lot of them are still filled with water and it is going to be plenty money to be trekking across any fields today. So we're just going to be scouting for the road. You can see this road must be closed as well. Like I said, they ran out of barricades so now they're just putting, looks like just a cone there to mark that that road's closed. This road here, this is the one that meets up with that intersection down where I was at before 
where the water was running over one of the bridges. As you can tell, we get down here a little ways, just beyond the bend site, the water is well over the road. There's a creek that's probably eight feet higher than what it should be. You can see we had a lot of water running over our driveways that go into the bend site here. Just a headache, a mess of things that we're gonna have to clean up and get ready for this fall. Yep, another road that's not gonna be accessible for a while. Thankfully, we live on the blacktop, so it's a little bit easier to get to the farm, still have access to the main highway. I'm gonna go head off, check one more direction, see if we can get around that way to some of our fields up north. If not, we'll just go check a couple fields farther south because I really don't even wanna see any more of this. This bridge heading out in the other direction of the farm is still accessible, but as you can tell, there is a lot of water still waiting on both sides. It did run over just a little bit here. As you can tell, we got some debris that started to get picked up by the water. We'll see if we can get to any fields going this way. Made it out to the field and it's about what I expected. We got a lot of standing water out here and it's, it's kind of gut wrenching because about three weeks ago we had five inches of rain. It drowned out a bunch of our soybean fields and a bunch of corn on our corn field. So we came out, replanted them all. And now here we are again, 13 inches of rain additionally, and everything we replanted is back underwater. And today being June 22nd, it's starting to get late to put in corn and we really don't have any way to put it in because we'll have to run down so much corn. But soybeans, depending on when the fields dry out, we might be able to get back out here. It's really hard to say if it rains anymore this week, then we're pretty much beyond the 4th of July and we won't. But we'll go check a couple other fields. Hopefully they look better than this one at least. This is still that same field, but man, is there a lot of water sitting in there. It's got the whole ditch filled, another big pond up here, another big pond in the neighbors right up here. There's just water all over. In the cornfields, it's hard to see how much standing water is out in the field just because of how tall the crop is. But by using the drone, I'm able to fly up to 400 feet, get a bird's eye view of where the water's standing, what kind of issues we got. Not that we're going to be doing any tiling, because tiling ain't going to solve the problem of 13 inches of rain, but it gives a view of what we got out there for crop. Stopped at another intersection because we got a bunch of road close signs. One there, one there, one there. This way is still open, or at least there ain't a cone. We haven't driven down that way. Admittedly, I did drive over here. You can see we got standing water up there and up there, but another, just check the radar, another storm's on the way, so we'll go check another cornfield up in this direction. Another cornfield with a bunch more standing water. I did replant some corn out here about 10 days ago. You can see it trying to poke through. I'll show you guys, maybe it'll make it, hopefully, because it's gonna get too late to plant corn out here again. Some of these taller ones, these are what were planted the first go around back in April. Then since some of those got drowned out from the first big flood we had, I replanted, you can see the corn here was coming, but now it's all drowning out again, hoping those come back through, since if I do have to come back with the planter, I'll just run down. This corn's getting too tall. But some of that corn, like this, looks like it should survive. The other problem we're gonna have out here in our corn fields is where the water is so high and raised up some of our old past year's crop residue, like you can see off in the distance there. Because all the disease and pest pressure always stays at the soil surface when water like this comes, all of our diseases that are on the past year's crop residue gets raised up, splashes on to our corn plants. And even when this water does subside, that residue is gonna stay on the corn plants. So we're gonna have a lot of disease pressure more than likely this year, just because of the abnormal amount of rain. So that'll be, up to, that'll be something that we're gonna have to watch for as things move forward in the crop season. Not only is it the disease pressure that we're gonna have to be monitoring and trying to figure out what's the best plan moving forward now after the rain, but also with all this rain, a lot of our nitrogen or the nutrient that helps keep our plants green, grow a big ear, a lot of that's getting leached out with the water. 
and we are still supposed to put about 40 pounds of nitrogen down in all of our fields side dress that on but as you can tell there is absolutely no way we're going to be able to get in the fields for quite a while so that's another thing we got to make plans on and try to figure out what's going to be the best thing to do out here in all the cornfields moving forward I was heading to check one more field. Guess what? It's raining again. So I'm gonna head back around with the Ranger, but I got out show you guys. Look, this is even a paved road. Like we have back at the farm, water shooting out across, a bunch of water held back because of the road, trying to shoot through that culvert, but can't get fast enough under the road. This is crazy and I, it's not that deep down there. I could easily go through with the Ranger, but yesterday I almost got stuck going out with the Ranger and it started downpouring and I couldn't get back because the road's starting to, flow over with water so we'll take the ranger back i'll show you guys some of the damage we have down at the bend site back at the bend site and i gotta say compared to last night things look drastically different here last night we had water shooting down the ditch here and since it wasn't able to go through the culvert fast enough it started to fill <clears throat> over here by our big bend that started to wrap around had water getting lodged and filled in by the leg it was quite the disaster of all the water that we had down here trying to escape at the same time. Over by this driveway that we have into the bend site, you can see since the water wasn't able to go anywhere and since our whole yard slopes downhill, it all wants to rush down to that creek. So eventually it started to fill over top of the ground here. As you can tell, it eroded away pretty deep spots out of our driveway that will have to come back, start filling a lot of this in since we'll need all this up in operation this fall. One thing I didn't check last night was how much water is in our big grain receiving pit. So I'm going to pull the tarp back, see how bad it's filled in with water. Oh. Oh. You can tell there's a good amount of water in there. This holds 550 bushel in here and it's about it's a half full. The only way to get that water out now is with the sump pump. For some reason, we have it tiled underneath, have tile all the way around it, but for some reason, all the time, not even just this massive flood that we're having right now, but water backfills in there. So we got a sump pump. Once the rain stops, we'll start sumping some of that water, get that out of there so it doesn't start rusting out our receiving pit. 13 inches of rain later, it's pretty safe to say we're gonna have to get these driveways built back up. It's gonna take a little bit of work, but that's nothing compared to everything we gotta figure out in the field yet. Still need to figure out our post pass on soybeans, our nitrogen application, our fungicide applications, figure out what's the best strategy now, when's the best timing. There's a lot of things to figure out, which now would be a good time. If you're interested in learning more about me, more about High Tech Farmer, go ahead, hit that subscribe button down below, and I'd love to see you guys in the next one.